Okay, part C. Um, find the lower quartile, Q1, of the weight of potatoes sold by Adam. Not of all the potatoes, just the ones that are sold by Adam. Okay, so that's what we're going to find now. The lower quartile of the potatoes that were sold by Adam. All right. So you have a normal curve. All right, he could only sell ones which were more than 92 kilograms. Uh, the mean was 140 kilograms. Sorry, grams, not kilograms. I'll just put the numbers 92 grams and 140 grams. That's the mean. Okay, so we want the low quartile of the ones that are sold. Now he can't sell these, so they're out of it. So the low quartile of this amount here. Now we worked out what the area of this amount was. Once it's standardized, once we've made Z0, and this became minus 1.2, that's a standardized numbers. In that case, the area of this region here is 0 0.8849. That's the area of this whole region here. Okay, now we want to find the lower quartile of this region. So we want to find the value of the weight such that, okay, the value of the weight such that 25% of the uh, the weights of the potatoes are less than that but in this region only so we want to find that where well, this is 0 0.25 and this is 0 0.75 okay so basically if i find 0. Point, sorry about that 0 0.75 times 0 0.8849 that will give me uh, this area over here Okay, that will give me this area over here. That is, this is now the whole thing. And this is now the area of that region here. Okay, of that region here that I've shaded. Okay, so let's find out what that gives us. One second. Um, oops. 0 0.75 times 0 0.8849 that gives us 0 0.663675 i'll write the whole thing out 0 0.663675 was it yeah okay so that's this region here which is three quarters of this whole um area that he can sell because he can't sell the ones that are less than 92 grams so I want to find the value of Z. So this is like the Z for Q1, the Z value of the lower quartile, such that this is the area to the right of it. Okay, this is the area to the right of it. Now, unfortunately, the, the, um, the, we can see this is going to be less than the median. Okay, so we can see that basically the median of the, the, the whole graph. But what we can see is that this is going to be okay um this um the, and the z value is going to be a negative okay it's a negative z value and the and the the graphs that we have don't have a negative z value so what we got to do is we got to look at its its twin you can say in the on the other side okay so this is the the same value of z that we're going to get there but just the opposite sign you can say negative z q1 so we've got to find what that value is okay and then just write minus in front of it and that value okay the area to the left of it is the same as the area to the right of this okay so we've got to find the value of z such that this is the area to the left of it and then just put a minus sign in front of it okay so uh, basically what we've got to find is we want to find the value we, we want to find the value of z such that um z is greater than uh, the z value of q1 is equal to 0 0.663675 okay which is equal to the probability that the value of z is less than the negative value of z q1 will be that same area so all we have to do is basically change we'll find what the value of z is and just put a minus in front of it and it will give us the value over here okay because this area on this side on the left of z of this part this this is going to be the same as the area that we need okay 
Okay, so let's go to the Z tables, the tables, uh, the, the, the normal curve table, and look for 0 0.6636 for uh, our area. We're looking for an area of 0 0.6636 and find what value of Z corresponds to that area. So let's go to the, we have to look at the area, and we're going to look at 0 0.6636, 0 0.6636. Okay, so we can see that the closest we're getting to that is these over here. So I'll just grab a few of them and take it back here, paste it here. So we can see those values that we have. Okay, so we can see that the closest we're going to get, the closest we're going to get, okay, to 6636 or 664, 664. 6637, 6637. The closest we're going to get to 6637, I guess, guess is 0 0.42. Okay, we don't have to do any kind of interpolation or anything like that. We can just use the closest value to Z. Okay, so the closest value to that area is 0 0.42. So I can see that this is going to be 0 0.42. Okay, so we can say the negative value of Z, Q1, is 0 0.42. Therefore, the Z value for our Q1 is going to be 0 0.42. Okay, so now we're going to find the actual value of Q1. So we have to basically, you know, this is how many standard deviations. So this will be negative uh, 0 0.42. So then we're going to find how many standard deviations. This is how many standard deviations is below the mean. We're going to find out what value it is. So remember, our standardization is given by, you want to find what Z is. You've got to take the value minus the mean over the standard deviation. So now we, we know what Z is, we have to find what X is. We know that's what the mean and the standard deviation are, 140 and 40, so we can find what our X value is. So we're gonna say, okay, so now we've got to basically put in the values. So we got our Z value is minus 0 0.42, and Q1 is what we're trying to find, minus the mean, which is 140, over the standard deviation, which is 40. So our Q1 therefore is going to be 40 times minus 0 0.42 plus 140. Okay, so I'll write the answer here. Our Q1, our low quartile is going to be, so we have 40 times negative 0 0.42 plus 140, which gives us 123.2. 123.2 okay grams so we can write that as 123 3sf that's fine okay so there's our answer for q1 okay now uh, that's the answer for part c now we've got to do part d okay now part d states betty set, selects a random of three samples of or sorry a random sample of three potatoes sold by adam sold by adam Find the probability that one weighs less than Q1, one weighs less more than Q3, and one has a weight between Q1 and Q3. So now we're only looking at the potatoes that are sold by Adam, not at the whole sample. Okay, and remember Q1 and Q3 are the lower quartile and the upper quartile of what was sold by Adam. Okay, those are the lower quartile and the upper quartile of what was sold by Adam. If you look at the question, um, go back to part B. It says the upper quartile of the weight of potatoes sold by Adam, not of the whole batch. And the lower quartile of the weight of potatoes sold by Adam. That's why we only, took, we only looked at the part that was over 92 grams. So if she's choosing only from those sold by Adam, not from the whole batch, then the probability that uh, Q1, that something is going to be less than Q1. Okay, so let's say the probability that her picks, let's say call it A, is less than Q1 is going to be 0 0.25 because a quarter of those sold by Adam are less than the low quartile of those that were sold by Adam, right? And the probability that A is between, um, the probability of that pick, uh, the, her, her pick is between Q1 and Q3 is going to be 0.5 because that's like the, between the low quartile and upper quartile, that's a half of the, um, you know, data in there. So the half of the, the data in there. Okay. And the probability that her pick is greater than Q3 is also going to be 0 
0 0.25. Okay, so basically let's call the ones that are less than Q1 the small size potatoes. Okay, we're going to call these the small potatoes. And the ones that are between Q1 and Q Q3, the medium potatoes. And the ones that are greater than Q3, the large potatoes. So she's taking um, a, th as a random sample of three potatoes. So basically, if we look at all the different outcomes that could happen, she could either pick a small one first and then a medium one second or a large one third or a small one and a large one and a medium one. Okay, or she could have picked a medium one first and then a small one and then a large one. Okay, or she could pick a medium one and then a large one and then a small one. Or she could have picked a large one first and then a small one and then a medium one or a large one first and a medium one and then a small one. That's all the different ways she's going to have one of each, okay, picked. All right, so there's six different ways she can pick, okay, uh, such that each one is different. Okay, one is small, one is medium, one is large and all the different combinations. And the probability of picking in that way would be 0 0.25 times 0 0.5 times 0 0.25. There are going to be combinations of this, but there's six different ways. So you've got six different outcomes that will give you the same combination of having one small, one medium, one large in any order. So basically this will give us our answer. So we take 0 0.25 times 0 0.25 times 0 0.5 times 6, which gives us 3 over 16. So 3 over 16 is our answer to this question. If you want to write it as a decimal, that's 0 0.1875. 0 0.1875. And there's the answer to this question.